The gut bacteria of rhinos may partially explain why fertility issues exist in captivity. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. Where have all the rhinos gone? Edition. I'm Julie Wolf, and today's study comes from MBio, ASM's journal um, covering all types of microbial sciences. Now, in this study, the take-home message is that the gut microbes of rhinos may partially explain why the southern white rhino specifically has fertility issues in captivity. To study this problem, scientists wanted to look at the gut microbiome contents of two distinct rhino species. One is that southern white rhinoceros, pictured on the top on the right-hand side there, and the other is the greater one-horned rhinoceros, pictured on the bottom. They both have similar diets in captivity, but they have very different fertility rates. The greater one-horned rhino has no problem having babies um, within inc- but the southern white rhino has much more difficult has been much more difficult to breed in zoos and other types of wildlife reserves. The question being asked by this research group is whether the diet is influencing fertility rates of the southern white rhino. The reason this question is being asked is because microbes can produce phytoestrogens as part of their metabolic byproducts. And those phytoestrogens are molecules that mimic estrogen-like hormones that are carried by the animals and can interact with the estrogen receptors to influence hormone signaling in the animal and potentially influence fertility. So on the next slide, we'll see the first thing that the researchers did was to look at what are the microbes carried in the gut of these different um, species. The microbiota are very species-specific, they discovered, by looking at the 16S ribosomal RNA genes. You can see um, by the bar graphs in that graph on the top there that the microbes that are carried in the gut are actually quite different. However, the phytoestrogen profiles were very similar between these two different species. When individual um, samples were studied, however, different animals were found to have different phytoestrogen Uh, profiles, and those are shown on the right-hand side in those pie charts. Those pie charts represent not only different compositions of phytoestrogens, which are produced by gut microbes, but also different concentrations. So A was the lowest concentration and C was the highest concentration. And the uh, individuals who have these various types of um, both levels and composition differences also have different types of uh, fertility rates. So for example, the individuals in that, that have the phytoestrogen profile shown on the top there in A have a lower mean pregnancy rate than those in profile C who have the highest pregnancy rate. Uh, from this, the researchers were able to um, summarize that the southern white rhino fertility rate may actually be uh, influenced by the phytoestrogen profile. Uh, they also showed that those phytoestrogens can interact with the estrogen receptor can see in the bar graphs on the very far right hand side that those different profiles of phytoestrogens can interact to influence the hormonal signaling of those different species at different rates. Uh, And so uh, the abundance of some of these different bacterial taxa and their microbially uh, derived phytoestrogen metabolites may be playing a role in the southern white rhino fertility. Why is this important? Well, On our next slide, we'll see that um, although there were similar similar phytoestrogen levels um, found between the species, uh, the differences may in in how they interact um, and how they are produced may be related to the foraging strategies comparing their in-captivity diet to their diet in the wild. Southern white rhinos are grazers, which means that they eat grasses and hay, both uh, in the wild, as well as um, in, in captivity, where they're given soy and alfalfa pellets that are uh, supplemented with grasses. Whereas those great one-horned rhinos eat uh, a slightly larger variety of foods. They are browsers, meaning that they're going to eat grasses, but also fruits and leaves and other types of um, plants that they find laying around. And it's, it's possible that the, the foodstuffs that are given to the rhinos influence those phytoestrogen levels, which then in turn can potentially influence their hormonal signaling and play a role in fertility. So we've learned that uh, reproductive outcomes may be driven by the gut microbiota's transformation of dietary phytoestrogens in these captive southern white rhinos. And hopefully this research will help not only the southern white rhinos, but other rhinos, especially the northern white rhino, which has right now only two 
remaining individuals uh, that are still living, both are females. And this type of research may help with things such as in vitro fertilization studies that are ongoing as people try to save this species from extinction. I'd like to thank you for listening to Microbial Minutes and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time.